I'm uh, Jacopo Dignazzi and I've been working with uh, ISI Foundation and Wikimedia Foundation on a project called uh, WISCOM, which stands for Wikipedia Source Controversiality Matrix. So in the context of scientific communication, the issue of uh, source reliability is extremely important because uh, you want to back up your claims with uh, factual and trustworthy information. Nonetheless, uh, it's not always easy to establish uh, which sources are good or not. And so in recent years, there has been a lot of effort to develop methodologies to assess source, source reliability. This issue is especially important for uh, Wikipedia being the biggest encyclopedia online. And so here, uh, editors came up with this uh, list of uh, they call perennial sources, which is uh, a few hundreds of domains classified as uh, reliable, unreliable, and so on. It is an extremely important resource because it sets a standard uh, for editors uh, uh, about what source should or should not be on the platform. But it's also a limited one because it requires uh, editors to join and discuss before adding a domain. So the goal of our project is to help in this process, uh, developing some metrics to automata automatize uh, uh, source reliability detection. And we want to do so using a language agnostic approach, meaning that we cannot read inside the source, but we can only rely on uh, editor's behavior. In this way, uh, we can also apply our metrics to all languages, especially low resource ones, thus uh, improving knowledge equity. Our project is divided in uh, three phases. First is data collection, then we develop uh, aforementioned metrics, and finally we assess uh, whether our metrics are good. For data collection, we selected uh, a few topics, such as climate change, COVID, uh, and history. And uh, for all of these topics, uh, we find all the relevant pages. And then for all these pages, uh, we go through all the history of revisions uh, looking for source identifiers, which can be an URL, a DOI code, the SBN, and so on. In this way, our data consists in uh, all the history of uh, each source on each page. So we know when a source was first added, uh, if it was removed, and uh, who did it. At this point, uh, what does it mean to have a language agnostic metric? It means uh, answering questions such as uh, on how many pages has it been added, but also uh, for how long has it been visible on an article and how many users added or removed it. So we came up with more than a hundred uh, metrics like this. And uh, then we feed all these metrics uh, to an XGBoost model and try to predict uh, the perennial uh, classification of these domains. So what we want to study here is whether there is a difference in uh, editor behavior toward uh, reliable and unreliable sources. What we see is that indeed this approach uh, is promising. For instance, in uh, climate change English, uh, our model achieved a performance of uh, an F1 macro of above 0 0.8 and similar results are uh, obtained for all topics. When looking at the metrics, uh, we see that uh, indeed uh, many of these align with the reliability of sources or not. For instance, uh, if a source is added to a page and then it's, uh, uh, it stays there for a long time, uh, that is a good indication that uh, it is a reliable source. Uh, on the other hand, when it's added and it's removed by a registered editor, then uh, that can be a good indication that the sources uh, are reliable. When we look, for instance, at uh, youtube.com, the combination of these metrics can also tell uh, an insightful story. Uh, for instance, YouTube is uh, uh, considered unreliable by perennial classification, but it is uh, used uh, frequently and also been added recently on many pages. But uh, since uh, when added, uh, it is soon after removed, then our model uh, correctly identify it uh, as uh, an unreliable domain. Since our focus is uh, on all languages, uh, here we see a sample of uh, model performances on different languages from high, mid, and uh, low resource ones. Unfortunately, the model performances decay with lower and lower resources. And this can happen uh, maybe because uh, there is not enough inf information for the model to learn, or uh, the editor attitude is different uh, in uh, low resource languages. So we did this analysis. In this graph, uh, we see the relation between number of revisions and uh, F1 macro score of uh, models for both English and other languages. 
On the left part of the graph, we see that uh, when there is not enough information, in any case, the model is not performing well. So it needs enough information to learn. On the right part, we see that uh, after enough information is provided, the English model performs better. So this is an indication that also the behavior of uh, the editors and their, their attention to quality of sources matter in uh, this approach. To mitigate the effect of uh, low resources on, uh, on other languages, we train the model using uh, the information of all languages together. And we see that uh, doing this, uh, the percentage of uh, on how many languages uh, the model performs better than a random classifier improves by a lot. And so this tells us that indeed a general model is possible and it can be applied and can tell a, an interesting story also for low resource languages. In conclusion, so this study tells us that indeed it is possible to use editor's activity to detect the reliability of sources. And uh, this can be useful uh, on one hand to uh, study editor's attitude in different contexts to source uh, quality. But also, if we want to apply our model outside of the perennial sources, uh, our model can be also used uh, to um, expand the list of uh, perennial sources. So I hope you find this, uh, this work interesting, and uh, this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.